You know guys, I've gotta be honest. Sometimes being a network engineer or admin or whatever you are, tech, uh, it's not the greatest job in the world sometimes. Like it kinda sucks some of that time. And I know you're thinking, oh, hold on Chuck, you've been telling us all this time that being a network engineer is the greatest job ever. Yeah, it is, it is. Most of the time, but not all of the time. You see, there's some like dark parts of the network engineer role that we don't like to talk about. Well, some guys love to talk about it, but there's there are times where it's just not the greatest time to be that, that guy who's in charge of keeping the network up, or the guy who has a million projects he has to do, but like this much time to do it, while also trying to put out all these fires over here. Like it's, it's hard, which is why network automation is pretty exciting. Like honestly, it is. Oh, real quick, at the end of the video, I have a challenge for you, and I'm taking the same challenge myself. So watch till the end and join me in this challenge. All right. Now you can see from the title of this video, I'm talking about how you can start getting into this network automation stuff, not just, oh, learn Python. No, 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 I wanna show you how, as, as a network engineer, as a guy studying for a CCNA or a CCMP, how you can start taking practical steps to embrace this, because it's it's here, it's here. You gotta learn it, you got to. If you want to be uh, ahead of the game, if you wanna be the, the hero, the, the awesome unicorn, I would call you, that can bridge the gap between networking and programming and just be awesome. You wanna be awesome, right? So we're going to talk about how you can do this. And I have an interview with Hank Preston. Now Hank Preston is the guy to talk to about this whole uh, network developer thing, this whole net DevOps they're calling it. In fact, his job at Cisco is uh, developer evangelist or net DevOps evangelist, which just sounds crazy. <laughs> and he's also one of us. I mean, he, he started out in networking. He's a CCIE. So I think we can trust him. But I wanted to get into why this, this change, this automation, is so important for us now. And uh, thanks to Cisco for sponsoring this video. Now the cool thing about all this network automation uh, stuff, right, we'll just call it stuff, is that it starts to erase all the crappy parts, all the sucky parts of being a network engineer. There is nothing worse than getting a call at 3 a.m. and saying, hey, the whole network's down. You get up and you're, you know, you're half asleep. You don't have any coffee, which for me is essential. And I'm at my monitor and I'm like, okay, where do I begin? The network is apparently down. And then it turns out your CEO couldn't access Facebook or something. I mean, yeah, network down. But those those situations are the worst. Or it might be that you are the lone man on the totem pole. Like you, you have a massive network that you are in control of. You're one of like two network engineers and you guys are stressed out. You've got projects on projects on projects while you're also putting out all these fires over here. Things keep going down. Ah, what do you do about that? Well, you keep your head down. You just keep going, right? And that's where network automation comes into play. Like people realize this whole thing isn't working for us. Okay, so you've heard the terms, you know, network automation, um, commonly referred to as SDN or software defined networking. And SDN is great because we can automate the configuration of our network using like an SDN controller. So like if you have 20 routers, you wanna deploy uh, a couple access lists, well you script it up and boom, it all goes out to the 20 routers. Uh, time saver, right? But now we're even more into the future here. We're taking one step further. I've mentioned it before. It's a thing called intent-based networking or IBN. Now IBM, that's what I always hear, IBN. It's like SDN, but different. Well, how is it different? Let's say you've been given a task. You got a new group of developers in your company and they need access to a new group of developer servers. Traditionally, we think, okay, I gotta think of a subnet. I need a VLAN, put the VLAN there, put the access list here, firewall rules here and go box to box to box to box, configure that, and then we're good. It takes time, but we got it done. In comes SDN. We have a software-defined networking controller. We script up this config. We write up the script, hit deploy, and it goes to all of our devices. That's better. And then IBN comes in, intent-based networking. We switch gears from trying to figure out what config we put on each device to just telling our IBN controller, which in this case would be Cisco DNA Center, we just tell it what we intend to do with our network. Ah, see, intent-based networking, that's where it comes from. So we don't worry about access lists and, and VLANs and all that and adding that configuration. No, we just tell DNA Center, hey, we want these guys, the developers, to talk to our developer servers, and he just does it across all of our devices. He translates our, our business intent, like I want that to happen, to policy, and then he activates it and makes it happen. <laughs> 
Now here's the cool part. I know what you're thinking. We just talked about the cool part. No, this is even cooler. Once your network's configured and DNA Sensor took care of it, it will then constantly, I'm talking all the time, even when you're sleeping, verify that the network is working the way you intended it. <laughs> Intent again, right? So in the example I used about getting that 3 a.m. Uh, phone call that your network is down, DNA Sensor should help with that. How would you like to, before that call even happens, before you get called, DNA Center realizes the issue is there, and it might do one of two things. It might fix it itself before it becomes an issue, or let you know before anyone knows about it, before it becomes a huge outage. That's killer. And that's called the assurance piece. It's always assuring that your network is working the way you want it to, or the way you intend it to. Now, I told you all of that so you could see how automation's here to help, not to hurt us. And now that it's helping us with our configs and with our troubleshooting, we could possibly have a lot of free time on our hands. Free time to do the things we want to do, like try out new things, lab out new things, or maybe learn some programming and play with the APIs that DNA Center has. Maybe even implementing Alexa and make your network voice controlled. That's just one idea. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. I'm saying a lot of cool things that sound like I'm describing some Terminator future world. Well, maybe not Terminator, that would be horrible. Like, let's just say Harry Potter, everyone loves Harry Potter. It sounds like magic, right? I know. I want you to go look at it for yourself. And the link's below. You can actually jump in and try this yourself. They have some walkthrough labs. You can jump in and do some pretty cool things with DNA and get, and get hands on. So I got some links below for that. Okay, so bam. <laughs> Automation and this new buzzword intent-based networking, we know that it'll make your life easier. Okay, yes, as a network engineer. And that's what we're, we're trying to get to, right? We wanna free up our time so we can start doing the things that we always wanted to do. That's really what it is. Because you're, you're, in, you're into networking now because you love learning new things. You love the CCNA because you're, you're trudging through and learning it. And that's, that gets me to this. Okay, I, you got me sold, I'm sold. What's my next step? What, what do I do next? I'm getting my CCNA, or I just finished my CCNA, or I'm about to work on my CCMP, or should I work on my CCP? Like, what, what do I do? Do I start learning Python right now? Or do I learn Java? Do I learn JavaScript? I mean, like, what, what direction do we go? Okay, let's clear it up, let's clear it up. I, uh, I asked these same questions to Hank Preston and he graciously answered them. So let's jump into my interview at Cisco Live and let's see what he has to say. This is Hank Preston. Now, Hank Preston, what are you? <laughs> yeah, that's a really good question. I, I consider myself really lucky. I have the best job at Cisco. My entire job description is learn about cool technology, uh, figure it out, and then go tell people about it. Because as a developer evangelist in DevNet, we're trying to help network engineers make this transition towards automation. The goal is to kind of take the skill sets that we've built up around networking, so fundamentals of layer two, layer mm. three concepts, and then figure out how does automation fit in? How do we actually get practical SDN concepts through? Um, where is the, tri the, 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 cro the crossroads between DevOps and networking, which has been my big focus these days around this net DevOps concept, of taking the, the best practices and culture and ideas mm -hmm. from the DevOps transition from software developers and applying it to network engineering. So it, for, for guys like me, mm -hmm. I, I don't know any program, I've been working on Python and sure. stuff. Uh, for guys like me, how do you, what's the first step? What do you start with? Yeah, you know, it's, it's one of the things I talk a bunch about in, in all the conversations that I go through. And, and, I, and I give this talk and I've been doing it for a while now, mm -hmm. how to be a network engineer in a programmable age. Yeah. And I, we take this, this journey and, and kind of talk about what does it look like for those traditional engineers and how do, they, how do they start to evolve and why? And one of the things we talk about is what is the phase journey? Where do you go through? And I always tell people, start out with just some really fundamental basics. Put the networking aside for a minute and okay. go learn basic Python. You're not going right. to be a programmer developer, but go learn basic syntax, learn how to read other people's code, experiment with what's out there. And there are tons of resources today for like Python 101. Oh some yeah, of them are, a ton of stuff out oh, there. Oh yeah. yeah, and some of them are generic, some of them are focused for network engineers, which are nice. Mm -hmm. And then so learn some Python, go sign up for GitHub, troll through all the examples, learn what data formats are, explore REST APIs. Uh, my favorite API um, when I teach REST API classes is the Chuck Norris database API. <laughs> So for Chuck Norris jokes, <laughs> and so that's the one I started with, is how do I go request Chuck Norris so this, jokes? So this is a real thing. It is a real API. Oh my goodness. You go to the, the uh, icndb.com, the internet Chuck Norris database.com. Link below. <laughs> and they have a full on API. Once you've got some of those fundamentals down, then you can start to add some of the new topics. Linux fundamentals, Docker containers and images. And then you just build up from there and start to add in things like, okay, now that I understand a little bit of Python, I understand a little bit of Docker, a little bit of Linux, explore Linux networking, explore Docker networking, and then just build up from there and you'll find use cases that go through. 
And that's that's the general advice is, is set it aside for a bit, the networking, and start with just some basics. And then you'll you'll bring the relevance in because you'll start to see where things connect. So I'll hear this a lot and you know I try to you know explain, hey, the future is programming. Like you, you gotta become what I call a unicorn. You gotta yeah. be both. <laughs> you gotta be both. Yeah. Um, so a lot of guys are like, okay, I'm studying for my CCNA. Uh, it's super frustrating to see all this SDN stuff. Am I wasting my time? Mm -hmm. Am I wasting my time doing a CCNA? Should I just quit all this and go into programming? That's, mm -hmm. It seems like it's easier to learn networking after you're a programmer than vice versa. Uh, I don't know which one's easier to learn first, um, but the one thing I will tell folks, and, and network engineers will see this as they go through, but I hear this a ton of times, is, is those types of comments. Is it even worth learning the basics of networking? And what you'll find is if you have a fundamentals in networking and you take this journey that we just discussed, like figure some of the basics out and then start to look at cloud networking, container and Linux networking, you will be appalled by the types of networks that are running these critical applications in the cloud and in containers mm. today. Because they were built by people that didn't have the fundamental understanding of how to build a good network. Right. And so they lack good segmentation. They lack scale capabilities. There's no good way to operate them and understand. And even if there was, they don't know what they're looking for. And so what we really need are people that have both sides of it. We need core fundamental networking skills, but we also need to understand what does it mean to build a network in the cloud? What does it mean to build a network with containers? How do we connect a container network to a cloud, to a physical data center? You're not going to be able to do that if you don't start, study and learn the fundamentals that the CCNA, the CCNP, mm. and depending on where you're headed, maybe even the CCI level to go. All right, so let's say that, let's say they're sold. They're like, okay, yeah, I wanna, I wanna be that unicorn. Yep. Um, What's what, what do you what's, what's their plan? What's their roadmap? So CCNA, should they go CCMP, then jump into pro programming, or should they go CCNA programming, or all at the same time? So that second one is the one I usually give folks: is, is diversify a little bit, spend okay. some time on some core networking pieces, get to a point that you feel comfortable, then go do a little bit of programming work, mm -hmm. and then get some there, get comfortable, and then go learn a little bit more networking. It's this balance back and forth. Um, I really believe, and you talked about the unicorn, right? Yeah. Most of the unicorns anywhere, whether it's the full stack developer from a software development perspective, right, right. they may have a specialty, but what gives them the power is the fact that they have this breadth, that they mm -hmm. understand the full, they understand a bit of front end, they understand some middleware and databases and how to work yeah. with containers. We're gonna have the same thing in the networking. If you only specialize in on one very specific thing, well, you're gonna lack some of the context and you won't understand how to connect it with everything else going on. And so I always recommend people go in deep and then step back and find something else to go check out. And you can always go back to your passion. Like if you're right. super passionate about service provider networks and building like huge scale capabilities, we'll bring everything and relate it back to there, but step away for a little bit and check out what else is out there. Mm, okay. So. So guys, this is for you. <laughs> so if, if I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, just, I'm fresh out, I'm trying to figure this out, what, what do I do? So CCNA, mm -hmm. you're saying CCNA. At the same time, maybe devote maybe one day a week to jumping in and, and going on devnet.com or, yeah. or maybe David Bomble's Python for Network mm -hmm. Engineers course or anything like that, just kind of getting your feet wet there. Yeah, I would say check those out, but the site is developer.cisco.com. <laughs> to make sure we get it right. But go over, explore some of the learning labs that we have. Uh, go take one of our coding basics learning labs. Um, dive in and explore the learning labs we wrote on NetConf and Yang Fundamentals. Mm. Go check out some of the labs on the open source products like Open Daylight Controllers or look at some of the things Things like we have with uh, T-Rex, which will give you generating, generate traffic so that you can do put those, inject them into your test plans and go through. Like there are so many really good things to do. Mm. And so take a step back from your core like Cisco Press book or your CBT Nuggets videos and mm. look at what else is out there because that'll How give you a chance. How dare he say that? <laughs> But you know what, I'm just gonna make my own course. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of, check out the Network Programmability Basics video course on DevNet, where you can join me for nine and a half hours of the fundamentals of Network Programmability Basics. And then, go check out what they've got on CBT. <laughs> Thanks so much for <laughs> joining us here. Um, uh, where can they find you at? Yeah, the easiest way to find me is to follow me on Twitter. I'm at HF Preston, because somebody else already had H Preston, and I'm disappointed because they don't make good use of it. So HF Preston on the Twitters is the best way to follow me to see what's going on. Cool, man. Well, it's been great. Yeah. Thanks so much for taking the time. Yeah, thanks, Chuck. All right. All right. That's about it. All right. That's a wrap. No, that was good. <laughs> okay, here's my challenge for you, and I'm taking the same challenge as well. Uh, let's look at Hank Preston's course. Let's do that. It's free. It's on DevNet, so you have to go in and create your account, which you should already have that, developer.cisco.com. Um, go on there, and let's take the Network Programmability Basics course from Hank Preston. Let's go on there. Let's, let's become familiar with 
Python and Yang and all the other stuff. Let's start this journey. Let's not like sit on our laurels. Now, if you're if you're in the middle of your CCNA, if you're in the middle of your CCMP, hey, don't stop. But if you're getting to a point or you're at the point where you're kind of in between certs, which is never really a great place to be, but hey, take your breaks when you can. But let's let's take this challenge. Let's actually start learning network programmability. Let's let's just dip our toe into it and see what it's like. What do you say? Hope you said yes. <laughs> so if you're going to take this challenge, let me know below so I can know who's on the team here. And we can keep each other accountable. I don't know, maybe I'll create a Facebook group or something, but we can just start delving into this network programmability thing and we can start talking about well what that looks like and how, how it's changing our lives day to day. So the change is here. It's not so scary, right? I mean, it's pretty cool for us and we're, we're gonna get to learn some new stuff, which if you're into networking, you love learning new stuff, right? That's why you're watching this video. Well guys, if you haven't already, subscribe for more stuff. Uh, I'll be talking a lot more about this kind of stuff and networking also. Whew, I need more coffee after that. Oh, that's about it guys. I'll catch y'all later.